Alan Hale Jr. celebrated for his iconic role as Skipper Jonas Grumby on the beloved series Gilligan's Island. Yeah. Listen, you dumb con. I told you once and I'm telling you again, I run this cell block. Yeah. Endeared himself to audiences with his infectious charm and camaraderie with the rest of the castaways. Merry Christmas to all! Oh, ho, ho, ho. Look at that cake. Well, come on, let's get down to business. Yet amidst the laughter and adventures of the show, Hale harbored a fascinating secret behind the scenes. Join us as we delve into the untold story of Alan Hale Jr.'s hidden truth while filming Gilligan's Island. Early Life Alan Hale McCahan Jr.'s journey began on March 8, 1921, in the vibrant city of Los Angeles, California, in the heart of the United States. Born into a family deeply ingrained in the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, Alan's lineage was no stranger to the silver screen. His father, the esteemed Alan Hale Sr., was a prominent figure in the world of cinema, renowned for his versatility as both a leading man in silent films and a supporting actor in the era of sound. He had already appeared in over 238 films when his son was born. He played Little John in Robin Hood films thrice over 28 years, beginning with the silent Douglas Fairbanks version. What's your name, friend? John Little. What's yours? Robin. Not Robin of Loxley. Why? Then I'm right glad I fell in with you. It was he who did the falling in. <laughs> Alongside him was Gretchen Hartman, Alan Jr.'s mother, a luminary of the silent film era. Alan shared his home with his sister Karen Hale Wookie, who would later carve her career as an actress and script supervisor in the entertainment industry. From his first breath, Alan was surrounded by the allure of showbiz. However, despite being born into a family of actors, Alan Jr. did not initially show much interest in pursuing a career in show business. However, this lack of interest did not last long. Alan was not only interested in acting, but also had a fascination with the sciences. An early reference to him in the Los Angeles Times on November 11, 1934, revealed his passion for sharing his knowledge of natural phenomena with his son. At the tender age of 10, he stepped onto the iconic Broadway stage, setting the stage for a remarkable journey in the entertainment world. His debut was in the stage play, Caught Wet. The play opened on November 4 and closed later that month. From 1934 to 1935, Hale Jr. appeared in Smart Miracle, and in 1937, he had a role in Red Harvest. He made one final stage appearance in Hook and Ladder in 1952, and after that, he moved to the movies. However, his initial foray into film was a necessity rather than a deliberate pursuit of fame. At just 13, in a bid to afford a bike, he found himself on the set of Wild Boys of the Road, though behind the camera due to safety concerns. Also, his part was deleted from the film's final release, but he still received screen credit for the role. Nevertheless, this experience ignited a spark within him, propelling him towards a career in acting. However, before he pursued acting, Hale Jr. had a notable stint as a college football player for the University of Southern California Trojans. His athleticism and physicality were evident on the football field, where he played linebacker. One of the highlights of his career was participating in the 1935 Rose Bowl. Allen remained grounded and humble despite his Hollywood upbringing, earning him the affectionate nickname Buddy among family and friends. While his father's legacy undoubtedly opened doors, Allen Jr. was determined to forge his own path. Often he dabbled in various roles, often uncredited. Budding acting career. In the vibrant 1940s, Alan Hale Jr. embarked on a journey that would lead him to the glittering stages of Hollywood. Starting out, he engaged in different things, trying his hand at singing, with his deep baritone voice echoing through the smoky ambience of nightclubs. However, his true talents shone in the world of acting. In 1941, Hale Jr. landed small parts in movies like I Wanted Wings, Dive Bomber, and All-American Co-Ed. Although his name didn't appear in the credits, people started noticing him around this time, seeing him as the next big thing in acting, just like his dad. And I got this call to come down. Well, we had a small budget picture, and it was kind of a difficulty as to how was I going to get there. There were no planes out of there. 
Then, in 1942, he got a big break when Hal Roach Studio signed him up for a leading role in Yanks Ahoy. Newspapers like The Democrat and Chronicle mentioned how the studio supported new talent, especially those following in their parents' footsteps. At just 22 years old, Hale Jr. was seen as a perfect fit for the role of a Navy officer in the movie, matching his father's legacy with his own promising career, following in the footsteps of his father. Alan Hale Jr. was one of the first of what are now known as Nepo babies, people whose early career prospects were impacted by the success of their family in the business. The elder Hale's reputation and extensive network within Hollywood played a pivotal role in shaping Jr.'s early career, opening doors, and providing valuable opportunities for him to showcase his talent. Growing up in the household of Alan Hale Sr., a seasoned actor, Jr. was exposed to the inner workings of showbiz from an early age. Rubbing shoulders with influential figures in the industry, Jr. formed connections that would prove instrumental in his own rise to stardom. Senior Hale wasn't just a talented actor, but a seasoned professional who had navigated Hollywood's twists and turns for decades. His guidance and mentorship would have undoubtedly laid a solid foundation for Jr.'s own journey in the limelight. Learning from his father's experiences and wisdom, Jr. honed his craft and forged his path in show business. The industry connections Senior Hale had cultivated often translated into casting opportunities for his son. Casting directors and producers familiar with Senior Hale's work were more inclined to consider Junior for roles, giving him a foot in the door. Junior's resemblance to his father, both in looks and demeanor, further boosted his marketability, allowing him to carry on the legacy of the Hale acting brand seamlessly. While Junior undoubtedly benefited from his father's prominence, he also worked tirelessly to establish himself as a talented actor in his own right. His dedication and perseverance, coupled with the invaluable lessons learned from his father, paved the way for a successful career that would leave its mark on Hollywood for years to come. Military Career When World War II broke out, Alan Hale Jr. felt a calling to serve his country. In 1943, he took the oath at the San Francisco Recruiting Office and embarked on his basic training in Alameda. Amidst wartime turmoil, he also embarked on another significant journey, marriage to Bettina Dewar. The newlyweds savored a brief honeymoon before establishing roots in San Francisco. Throughout his service in the Coast Guard from 1943 to 1945, Hale distinguished himself, steadily rising to the rank of Seaman E3. Even after the war's end, he remained stationed there, embracing his duty with unwavering dedication. His service played a significant role in shaping his life and later influenced his portrayal of the skipper. After returning to civilian life, Hale found himself drawn back to the enchanting world of acting. To his delight, he discovered that his time in the service had enriched his spirit and honed his craft. His father, a luminary in the entertainment industry had been a steadfast observer of his son's evolution as an actor, from radio gigs to theatrical performances and minor film roles. In 1975, Alan Hale Jr. shared his experiences as an actor in an interview with the Long Beach, California-based Independence Press Telegram. He recalled his grandfather's two-week visit to the West Coast that turned into a 14-year stay, and the advice he offered him that stayed with him for his life was, You've got two eyes and two ears, so use them, pushing him to pursue real-world experiences. Alan decided to follow this advice and quickly left acting school to begin his career in the film industry. Between the 1940s and the 1960s, he starred in 37 movies, including the critically acclaimed The Spirit of West Point in 1947 and the co-starring Hang 'em High with Clint Eastwood in 1968. While his journey was marked by steady work, the pay wasn't always plentiful. Hale creatively navigated the ebb and flow of finances, supplementing his income through various unconventional means. From peddling vacuum cleaners to tackling odd jobs, he approached each challenge with tenacity and grace. One anecdote in particular illustrates his innate charm, selling multiple vacuums to a household with limited English proficiency transforming a mundane transaction into a jubilant affair. 
Throughout his endeavors, Hale remained grounded, refusing to rely on his family name as a shortcut to success. His bond with his father, a pillar of support and inspiration, remained strong. Tragically, their plans to share the screen in Sons of the Musketeers were shattered by his father's untimely passing on January 22, 1950. Reflecting on the missed opportunity, Hale acknowledged the lessons he might have gleaned from his father's seasoned expertise. He dropped the junior from his name after his father died at 1950, fully focusing on his acting career. Success in acting career. Allen's acting journey started branching out as the 1950s rolled in, especially on TV. His dedication to the craft paid off handsomely as he was cast in various roles across TV and film, showcasing his remarkable flexibility. You'd find him popping up in films like When Willie Comes Marching Home, Sweetheart of Sigma Chi, and To the Shores of Tripoli, leaving his mark with each appearance. In 1950, he was cast in nine episodes of The Gene Autry Show as Tiny, the star's trusty sidekick. Venturing into lead role territory, Hale took on CBS's Biff Baker, USA, in 1952. The Cold War drama centered on two married secret agents posing behind the Iron Curtain as importers. In one episode, art thieves attempt to smuggle the Mona Lisa into Eastern Europe by painting over it. Charles Bronson played a Czech spy in two episodes of The Lone Season. Although the critics panned it, audiences loved the show and made it a hit. After the espionage series ended in 1954, Allen ventured into the realm of guest appearances, gracing television screens in shows like Annie Oakley, Fireside Theater, and Frontier. He also appeared in films such as The True Story of Jesse James and Up Periscope, among others. Hale's television journey didn't stop there. He snagged the starring role in the family railroading Western Casey Jones, which looked to tone down the violence prevalent in its peers of the time in 1957, enjoying a ride of 32 episodes before its curtains fell. Hale was the titular engineer of the Cannonball Express. That name should sound familiar to 1960s sitcom fans. The working locomotive that stood in for the Hooterville Cannonball on Petticoat Junction, the Sierra No. 3, was a famous Hollywood train in dozens of productions, including Casey Jones. From there, he made numerous guest appearances on shows such as Gunsmoke, Rawhide, The Andy Griffith Show, Maverick, 77 Sunset Strip, and Perry Mason. Allen was in high demand as an actor, and his television work kept him busy for many years. His versatility shone brightly in the Western series Cheyenne, where he portrayed the quirky rancher Les Bridgman, adding layers to the character opposite the legendary Clint Walker. And let's not forget his recurring appearances in The Texan, where he rode alongside Rory Calhoun, bringing his trademark charisma to the Wild West. Hale's star continued to rise as he made memorable guest appearances in beloved shows like Mr. Ed and Hawaiian Eye becoming a familiar face on the small screen. But it wasn't just television that hailed him. The silver screen beckoned, too. Hale's supporting roles in films like It Happened on Fifth Avenue and At Swords Point showcased his range, while his portrayal of the skipper in the timeless classic Gilligan's Island catapulted him to stardom. From 1964 to 1967, Audiences worldwide tuned in to witness the adventures of a stranded group on an isolated island, with Hale's skipper at the helm. His chemistry with co-star Bob Denver, who played Gilligan, endeared them to legions of fans, cementing his place in television history. Ultimately, Allen's journey from stage to screen is a testament to talent, perseverance, and the enduring magic of storytelling. With each role, he left an indelible mark on the hearts of audiences, ensuring his legacy would endure for generations to come. Gilligan's Island In 1964, fate smiled upon Alan Hale Jr. when he landed the role of the skipper on the beloved CBS sitcom Gilligan's Island. The story behind how he got the part is as delightful as the show. Alan, still clad in his Advance to the Rear costume, was spotted by the show's creator, Sherwood Schwartz, during a chance encounter at a restaurant. Despite Schwartz's initial desire for Alan to be the skipper, the network required a screen test. Here's where it gets interesting. Alan was in the midst of filming Bullet for a Bad Man, with a star-studded cast including Audie Murphy, 
and Ruta Lee. Unable to leave the set, Alan embarked on a wild journey spanning four states just to make it to his screen test, only to return to the movie set incognito. His dedication paid off, and he secured the role of the lovable skipper, Jonas Grumby. During filming, Alan encountered a minor setback when he fractured his wrist, but soldiered on, keeping it under wraps to avoid disrupting production. Interestingly, his character's full name, Jonas Grumby, is mentioned only once in the pilot episode, yet it became etched in viewers' memories worldwide. The timing of the show's inception coincided with a tragic moment in history, the assassination of President Kennedy, underscoring its place in the cultural landscape of the time. Gilligan's Island quickly became a cultural phenomenon, captivating audiences with its quirky characters and whimsical adventures. Despite the show's silliness, it turned Alan and his co-stars into household names. However, finding work after the show's run proved challenging for the cast. Despite this, Alan never spoke poorly of the series, maintaining a positive attitude. Alan's portrayal of the skipper resonated deeply with viewers, with one particular aspect adding a layer of authenticity to his character. A ring worn on screen held sentimental value, mirroring a cherished heirloom from Alan's life, passed down from his father. This tangible connection bridged the gap between fiction and reality, endearing Alan and his character even more to fans. The show's success spanned 98 episodes over three years, cementing Alan's place in television history. However, despite the show's popularity, typecasting posed challenges for the actors, limiting their opportunities for diverse roles and financial stability. Yet Alan embraced his role as the skipper wholeheartedly, often bringing joy to children by visiting hospitals dressed as his beloved character. Alan's journey as the skipper didn't end with the series' conclusion. He reprised the role in three television films and voiced the character in animated adaptations, showcasing his enduring connection to the iconic character. Additionally, Alan made guest appearances as a skipper doppelganger in other sitcoms, further solidifying his status as a television legend. Beyond the screen, Alan remained devoted to his portrayal of the skipper, promoting Gilligan's Island reruns alongside his co-star Bob Denver. Their appearances at various events delighted fans and underscored the show's lasting impact. Alan's legacy as the lovable skipper continues to sail on, leaving an indelible mark on viewers' hearts everywhere. Later Years Alan Hale's journey in the entertainment industry was nothing short of extraordinary, marked by his exceptional ability to blend his on-screen triumphs with his personal life seamlessly. Despite his unforgettable portrayal of the skipper on Gilligan's Island, Hale's career extended far beyond the shores of that iconic show. Following the conclusion of the island escapades, he ventured into various television projects, leaving an indelible mark on the small screen. His versatility shone as he graced the sets of numerous series, from the adventurous allure of The Wild Wild West to the heartwarming charm of The Love Boat. Notably, Hale's reunion with his fellow cast member Bob Denver on The Good Guys was a nostalgic delight for fans. This unexpected rendezvous on screen showcased their enduring chemistry, evoking fond memories of their time stranded on the island. Their collaboration reignited the magic of classic television, offering enthusiasts a glimpse into the timeless rapport between two beloved actors. Beyond television, Hale's cinematic endeavors added further depth to his illustrious career. From battling giant spiders in The Giant Spider Invasion, to sharing the screen with Hollywood legend Lillian Gish in Hambone and Hilly, his filmography boasted diverse roles. Hale's presence on the silver screen extended into the realm of comedy with his appearance in Johnny Dangerously, proving his versatility across genres. Not one to confine himself to a single medium, Hale's voice also resonated in the realm of animation, cementing his status as a multifaceted entertainer. His commitment to connecting with fans transcended the screen, evidenced by his frequent appearances at fan conventions and events. Through these interactions, he forged lasting connections with generations of admirers who cherished his contributions to Gilligan's Island and beyond. Yet, amidst the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, Hale remained grounded in his personal history, as symbolized by his cherished gold pinky ring and triangular stone necklace. 
These cherished mementos, steeped in familial significance, accompanied him throughout his career, embodying his authenticity and warmth on and off screen. In retrospect, Allen emerged as more than just a talented actor. He was a beloved figure whose enduring charm and genuine demeanor left an indelible mark on the hearts of audiences worldwide. From the shores of Gilligan's Island to the vast expanse of the entertainment industry, his legacy is a testament to the power of talent, dedication, and the human spirit. Business Ventures One standout chapter in the actor's life was his ownership of a beloved eatery called Alan Hale's Lobster Barrel, nestled among the bustling restaurants of La Cena Boulevard's Restaurant Row in sunny Los Angeles, California. Sporting his trademark skipper attire, he warmly greeted diners, infusing a personal touch into their dining experience. But his culinary influence didn't stop there. Sharing a cherished family recipe for Kansas chicken and dumplings, which later made its way into co-star Don Wells' cookbook, Marianne's Gilligan's Island Cookbook, in 1933, he showcased not just his love for food, but also immortalized his iconic character, the Skipper. Through recipes inspired by the show, his portrayal as Skipper Jonas Grumby in cookbook photos forever sealed his role in the culinary world, adding a flavorful dimension to his contributions beyond acting. Alan Hale's journey wasn't confined to the screen. It embraced immersive connections with fans through his restaurant venture and culinary creations, revealing a multifaceted personality that resonated with audiences well beyond his acting career. Transitioning from the restaurant scene, Hale ventured into the travel sector, launching Alan Hale's quality and leisure travel office. Yes, he even arranged boat cruises for eager travelers. Hale also helped sell automobiles for Ensign Chrysler Plymouth in Victoria, Canada. Tell him the skipper sent you, he proclaimed in the television ad. Embracing his skipper persona in real life, he bridged the gap between his television role and his interactions with patrons, fostering a unique connection with fans beyond entertainment. This venture underscored his enduring bond with audiences, shedding light on a different facet of his personality beyond the spotlight. Personal Life Alan Hale led a vibrant life filled with ups and downs. While his professional career soared, his personal life encountered its share of challenges. He married twice, first with Bettina Dewar, his childhood sweetheart Bettina, with whom he had four children. His children, from eldest to youngest, are Alan Brian Hale McCahan, Christopher James Hale McCahan, Lana Victoria Hale McCahan, and Michael Dorian McCahan. While none of the kids actively sought acting as a career, they did experiment with music and movies. Alan also has a grandson and two granddaughters. Sadly, their union ended after two decades. Then, in 1964, Alan tied the knot with Naomi Ingram, whom he affectionately called Trinket, a singer. They stuck together until Alan passed away. Outside the spotlight, Hale embraced leisure activities like golfing, opting for the Hollywood hackers instead of joining a fancy country club like his dad. A playful incident during downtime on the Gilligan's Island set involved co-star Bob Denver orchestrating a prank about their golfing prowess, showcasing the camaraderie among the cast. They were on the Gilligan's Island set, hitting golf balls and arguing about who went farther? Then, Bob Denver pulled a prank, making it seem like one of their shots broke a car windshield. Jim quickly owned up, admitting that Alan's shot went the furthest. Alan was always doing charity golf events, even giving away one of his skipper caps to raise money. His bond with Don Wells, who played Mary Ann on Gilligan's Island, transcended the screen, with the two often sharing meals and leisure time. Interestingly, Hale playfully adopted the nickname Little Buddy, a term of endearment for various characters, including Barney in The Farmer Takes a Wife, before it became synonymous with his role as Gilligan's companion. His personal life had its share of challenges, including struggles with alcoholism. However, he successfully overcame these challenges and became an advocate for sobriety, using his own experiences to inspire others to seek help and support when needed. Despite his jovial demeanor, Hale faced health setbacks in the 1970s, including a severe blood clot in his leg, prompting doctors to advise lifestyle changes. He battled health issues while maintaining his career, 
evident in his noticeably slimmer appearance during the final Gilligan's Island reunion movie in the early 1980s. These events provide a glimpse into the personal struggles and relationships that shaped the life of the beloved actor, death. During his life, Alan also faced health challenges. He was diagnosed with thymus cancer. In the midst of a difficult battle with thymus cancer, Alan Hale faced each day with unwavering strength and determination. Despite his struggles, he remained committed to his professional endeavors and cherished relationships. Throughout his journey, he exemplified resilience, never faltering in his dedication to his craft or his connections with those around him. Despite fighting his battle, Hale's compassion extended to others in need. In a touching moment of empathy, he visited a sick child in the hospital who adored his show, offering comfort and reassurance. He saw the boy and said, The skipper's here, son. Everything will be all right. This gesture encapsulated the warmth and kindness that defined Hale's character. Tragically, Alan Hale Jr. passed away on January 2, 1990, at the age of 68, surrounded by his loved ones at St. Vincent Medical Center in Los Angeles. He was surrounded by his second wife, a priest, and his sister. His departure marked the end of an era for Gilligan's Island fans, where he had endeared himself to audiences as skipper Jonas Grumby. Over the course of his career, he appeared in over 200 films and television series. In a fitting tribute to his legacy, the United States Coast Guard offered him a funeral with full military honors, recognizing his impact both on and off the screen. However, his second wife opted for a more intimate farewell, honoring his memory privately. At his funeral, Don Wells, Hale's co-star from Gilligan's Island, stood as a poignant reminder of the enduring bonds forged during their time together. Their connection transcended the confines of the television screen, reflecting the genuine camaraderie that defined their relationship. In accordance with his wishes, Alan Hale Jr.'s remains were cremated, with his ashes scattered into the vast expanse of the Pacific Ocean. Today, his contributions to the television industry are immortalized with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, a testament to the lasting impact of his remarkable career. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.